Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have back on the Goldstein on Gelt show best-selling author Vicki Ward. She's spoken to us in the past about her phenomenal book called The Devil's Casino about the downfall of Lehman Brothers. And she recently came up, out with a new book. In fact, her book came out the same week that my book came out. Hers is called The Liar's Ball, The Extraordinary Saga of How One Building Broke the World's Toughest Tycoons. Vicki, a real pleasure to have you back. Thank you, Doug. It's now great I, to be back, and congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Now, I, I happen to, to understand that the, the research about this book has nothing to do about a building, but rather about what's behind the buying and selling and kind of the excitement of, of a building. How did you get involved in this? <laughs> well, um, as you know, my, my, I like to write about worlds, and mm -hmm. my last book, The Devil's Casino, was about the world and the culture at Lehman Brothers, which ended up bringing down the bank. Um, and I had been intrigued. Um, you know, every day we read in the papers about the buying and selling of buildings, and we know the larger than life names, you know, Trump, uh, Zell, you know, these are the, the, in America particularly, the real estate families and the names are very well known to everyone. They're almost like celebrities, but we know very little about what they actually do, what really goes on in their world. And so I, I thought it would be fun to find out. And I thought the, the General Motors building would be a great vehicle through which to tell this because it is the most expensive office tower in America. And, you know, if Jason and the Golden Fleece were written today, this building would be the Golden, the Golden Fleece. And so really the book is about these outsized characters, these big name characters, most of whose names we do know, and their obsessive quest uh, for the building and all the, the horrible things that really go on in what is a very opaque world. And uh, infiltrating that world was really the fun of it. Uh, <laughs> For me. The, that is yeah. the real challenge of an, of an excellent yeah. reporter. One of yeah. the things that people might say about you, however, is that the targets of both of these books have been the, 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 core, the, the core beliefs in capitalism. You know, real estate, what, what's more capitalistic than real estate or a major in, investment bank? Have you either changed your view about capitalism and especially the dark side of it? Or do you think these are just some sort of exceptions that people should uh, should take note of but not really worry about? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think, you know, what, what interests me is, you know, human nature. And I, th I think that um, actually what I found interesting in this book was that this was a much darker side of capitalism than the last book, um, that, you know, <laughs> which seemed pretty well, dark that, in and of itself. Yeah, that, 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 that actually the real estate developers and the sort of unregulated Wild West in which they, they they operate make the bankers look like a bunch of you know like milk toast. I mean that they become mm. good guys. Um, and I think you know I think all writers um, are interested in what. Uh, you know what drives us, and 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 you know there are so many good things one could say about um, capitalism, but I I think that what's uh, what's fascinating is 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 the unwritten stuff, is the stuff that it gets hidden, and this is really what my book is about. You know, it's it's about secret meetings in coffee shops, it's about crates of documents being messaged from one developer's office to another to try and 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 spark a lawsuit it's about the really dirty stuff that no one wants to talk about that um that people do in order to make billions and billions of dollars they and and they love talking about the billions of dollars they just don't look to, like to talk about how they got there but the problem is when you're talking about it in fact this is not so much a real historical book because a lot of this happened very very recently and a lot of the players in fact are still alive. How did they sure. feel having you talk about this? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I try to, to be very fair and, uh, and accurate with my reporting. And uh, I thought that one of the characters, Harry Macklow, who ended up kind of coming out of nowhere to buy the building, um, 
uh, for $1.4 billion in 2003 and then created a billion dollars of value, not least because he brought in Steve Jobs, um, the late founder of Apple, who put the Apple Cube, uh, you know, at, at the most famous Apple store in the world in front of the building. Um, and, uh, you know, Harry Macklow then went through a very sort of Shakespearean saga with his family and ended up losing you know the building and all the and a billion dollars of value and he and he kind of chucked it away in seven days and it was all very dramatic and very harrowing and that story gets told in the book and I thought well he's not going to be happy he turns out to really uh love the book and think it's very good (laughs) on the other hand Donald Trump who Mm -hmm. I was who who co-owned it for five years desperately he owned it with a partner Steve Hilbert um who uh, back in the day was the highest paid CEO in America. He ran an insurance company called Conseco, uh, which went bust in 2000. And uh, because it went bust, Donald was left um, trying to buy the building outright from Conseco, who had been his partners for a couple of years, but who had put in most of the money. And he, he couldn't, there was protracted litigation and he he couldn't hold on, uh, and in the end he 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 had to walk away. But he did make money um, uh, when the building was sold to Harry Macklow. Um, and I uh, think Donald comes out very well in the book. Actually, you see him in a way that you see him in a way you don't. We don't normally get to see him. We see him being a very decent boss. We see him being a passionate deal maker. We see him really hungry for this building. We see him thinking of every possible way he can go for it and outmaneuver the competition. And you you see the passion he has for development for buildings which is not something you see if you watch his his tv shows necessarily yeah, that, that is but, he, but yeah but he um has come out and <laughs> and has sparked what some people are calling a twitter feud you know and he he um he, he has said that you know he read the book from cover to cover but it was boring <laughs> And that I'm third rate, and you know it's it's um, you know, and I've recently uh, been sent correspondence in which he you know he uh, calls me little Vicky, and um, and <laughs> talks about this pile of garbage. But he's yet to let me know what the pile of garbage you know what it what what is actually wrong with it. But he obviously doesn't like it, um, no. and and I've been asked about it, and I truthfully don't know why, except that you know. He doesn't own it, and also the book is not just about him. Right. Well, you never. When, when you're him, everything is just about you. I think right. they, they might say we're talking with first-rate author, certainly not third-rate author, Vicky Ward, <laughs> New York Times bestseller. Her last book was was fabulous. Actually, we we brought her on the Goldstein on Gelt show to talk about Devil's Casino, which was about Lehman Brothers. And uh, if you missed that interview, you should be sure to listen to that. At you can simply go to YouTube because all of our all of our audio interviews are made into videos. You, you can go to YouTube and look up Vicky Ward and Goldstein on Gelt to hear her previous interviews here. Vicky, we don't have a lot of time, but I, I want to touch on a topic that you mentioned in the, in, the, in the beginning. You talked about unregulated, that the field they're in is unregulated, and unregulated capitalism. Do you think that people reading this book will come along and say, you know, maybe we should have the SEC or some sort of government oversight? And is that a good idea? I think two things. I think certainly there should be much more oversight. I also think the biggest thing they will come away with is this sense that you've got these guys who are in the 1% in America who, you know, spend their lives paying, you know, seeming to pay zero tax. Um, And I think, you know, a lot of people will be left scratching their heads as, as to how these guys buy and sell buildings um and and some you know sometimes have disastrous um transactions and yet they walk away with their sort of pers- you know personal affairs uh looking even better i mean um the, you know harry macklow ends up losing the building losing a billion dollars of value and yet he's uh, buying a new boat and um the tax man never cometh in this world <laughs> and i think that um and I think that a lot of people, and you know, I, I do talk in the book about how the tax, the, the, the tax laws for this group are very different 
than than they are for, for sort of regular, you know, regular people with regular incomes. And I think that um, there ought to be a real discussion about that and changes made. Um, I really do. And yes, I certainly think that that, um, that that goes hand in hand with more oversight, unquestionably. All right. That is certainly a wake up call to get people to want to read and perhaps talk to their congressman about Vicki Ward's new book, The Liar's Ball. Vicki, we are just about out of time. But in the last few seconds, tell everyone, how can they follow you and follow your work and your next book? Oh, yes. Thank <laughs> you, Doug. <laughs> So uh, my website is vickyward.com. That's V-I-C-K-Y-W-A-R-D.com. Or, of course, go to amazon.com and look up The Liar's Ball. And, um, uh, yes, I'm already thinking ahead for the next book. I know what it's going to be. And, once again, it's going to be about a world that uh, seems to be one thing and perhaps isn't. Right. Well, we will <laughs> certainly look forward to talking to you about to you about that here on the Goldstein on Geld show. And we will put links to all of the, the websites you just mentioned at the show notes of today's show at goldsteinongeld.com. Vicki Ward, thanks again for coming. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Geld show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongeld.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show. 